Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster and recently I've seen a video on Metatron's channel. Um, if you're into um, medieval studies or things like that and you're on YouTube then I definitely imagine that you've probably already subscribed to him or you know about him somewhat. Um, recently he's done a video on the medieval soldier and how the medieval soldier is not what a lot of people imagine. And I just wanted to do an extra bit on the end of his video basically, kind of a, an addendum or um, an appendix as it were, just to um, talk about a few things that came to mind while I was watching that video. So uh, um, here we go. Um, so one of the things that Metatron talked about was about how the medieval soldier is not what people think about in uh, in TV and movies, um, in that we often have this idea of um, the knight being kind of all bright and shiny, and then um, there's this kind of really low peasant class, which is kind of covered in muck and mud and all of that sort of thing. And they um, they have bad um, bad personal hygiene. They've got a terrible diet. They're really weak and all of that that sort of thing. Um, now, one of the one of the reasons why um, we think about this, I think, is as Metatron says in his video, is to do with the uh, um, with Hollywood and films and and TV and that sort of thing. Popular culture is very strong in our minds and it paints this picture and it it's been around for ages um you've only got to look at monty python and the holy grail and there's that scene um with the peasants there which kind of takes the mick out of this and lampoons this idea um but i think it actually goes a bit a bit further back than this so we kind of have this idea in our heads that we as a species are on a forwards journey and we're getting smarter all the time. And so we're on a linear journey. So if we go backwards in time, say to, you know, the, uh, the Industrial Revolution, um, what we can imagine from there should be the same further back because we're on this linear journey. So if people back then had a poor diet, and uh, um, and the water wasn't really safe to drink and all of that sort of thing. It's only since then that we've kind of come out of that period of history and now we're in a better period of history where we've got, we understand good diet, we understand good nutrition, people are better fed and uh, um, there's a higher... Um, there's a higher average age and the water's safe to drink and oh, isn't it wonderful now? Um, now, that I disagree with this um, assumption when it comes to history. Um, basically, society tends to go through certain phases. And sometimes those phases bring us forwards in some ways, but in other ways they can bring us back. So, for example, the, um, the water issues that many, um, many cities and towns had in the Industrial Revolution were not really around beforehand. Um, there's this prevalent myth that uh, uh, people used to drink um, ale because the water wasn't any good, um, which doesn't really work because you need water in order to brew ale. Um, so, and if it if the water isn't clean, then the ale, the yeast in the ale dies, and so you can't brew the ale. But so there was this, this there's this kind of thing that you know because the water in the Industrial Revolution was bad. Previous to that, it was bad because people had poor nutrition then. They must have had poor nutrition beforehand. None of this is really bears out logically. Um, the Things tend to come and go. Um, throughout history, you can trace certain things. Uh, birth rate and death rate can have a huge effect on quality of life of the people that are currently alive. So um, I mean, it's often mentioned, but the Black Death actually perversely um, increased 
the uh, uh, the quality of life of the people after it uh, that survived it because um, they were able to chuck you know their um, their work and their time would actually had more value because there were fewer people to do the work um, that came of than there was before so um, if we were to have a look at the medieval period and obviously this this can change depending on what um, what definition you have of the medieval period but a lot of people now if we were to have a look at the medieval period um, uh, some people disagree on how to rate the medieval period in England we tend to go 1066 to 1485 because it's based around battles for some reason um, some people would go back further and would go from the 5th century what used to be called the Dark Ages, through to um, the end of the 15th century. But if we're looking at that, then we're talking about 1,000 years. And over the course of this, the, uh, the types of people around and the armies that were fielded changed massively. So if we're talking about a medieval person, the average medieval fighter, we're actually talking about far too wide a period to actually get a good idea of what that person would look like. Now, um, if we were to hone in on one particular place, we could probably say that most of the people throughout the medieval period actually had a better quality of life than you'd imagine a peasant would from what you see in um, in movies and film and things such as that. You know, the, it's not colour graded for one. History is not colour graded. People tended to, they were people. They enjoyed food, they enjoyed uh, bright colours, they enjoyed good clothes and, and fun times. And that goes all throughout history. Um, one thing that we can say that is um, is pretty true is that actually even within certain periods, different armies had different percentages of high quality troops and low quality troops. Now, one of the reasons for the English army doing extremely well in the Hundred Years' War, as an example, is that as an invading army, um, the English army tended to be completely professional. Whereas the defending French armies tended to um, include more of the kind of pressed into service um, kind of here because I'm defending my land kind of troops rather than troops that had been picked for a specific role. Now, um, that didn't uh, that didn't solve all of the problems, but it certainly helped a lot at some of the big battles. Um, Agincourt, for example, um, very few people nowadays believe the um, the rather kind of uh, propagandist kind of idea of Agincourt, where it's good old uh, English backbone beating um, beating the French with a with a curved stick. The army under Henry V was a professional army. It had been chosen um, by Henry to travel to France for a particular purpose. Uh, he turned some people away. It was not riddled with, uh, um, with disease. He had sent everyone that contracted the flux home on the ships because he understood that you didn't want those kind of people in your camps, um, in your war camps. So actually, what we're talking about when we get to Agincourt is um, an... The French army was um, a very large army, but it was undisciplined. It was an undisciplined army that had never fought together before and was not united by a single commander. The English army was an army of professionals that had been fighting together for a long time, been trained together for a long time under a very strong individual leader. And you can see how the battle plays out. It actually works in Henry's advantage to have a smaller army because everyone is doing exactly what they're supposed to do at the right time, whereas the French army doesn't do that. Okay, So you can see that in the medieval period, 
over the whole thousand years, if we're going to take that definition, things will change from the feudalism of the early years where you might round up some local um, local fjordsmen to uh, to defend your um, your village um, all the way to the late medieval period where you have professional mercenaries traveling the countryside and being hired in the Paston letters we have um, an example of the Pastons actually hiring a group of mercenaries to defend one of their houses against a local lord. So th these people were around, professional soldiers who were making a full-time job out of fighting, and they were being paid very well for it. Um, you know, it was, a, it was an important role kind of rambled a little bit there. I hope this is helpful. Um, thank you, Metatron, for your video. It's, it's really great. A load of people have this misconception that um, the medieval period is kind of uh, this kind of Hollywood view of things. And so um, anything that fights against that is good. I hope this video has added some extra thoughts to that. And I hope you guys like it. Please do like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all in my next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.